Imagine looking up at the sky 74,000 years ago. The sun rises as it always has, casting its warm glow across the ancient landscapes of Southeast Asia. But something is different today. A low rumble builds in the distance and the ground begins to tremble. Within hours the sky starts to darken, not with normal clouds but with something more sinister. This darkness would last not for days but for years. And this is where our story begins. In the mountains of southern India, there's an ancient tale passed down through generations. The elders gather their children around evening fires to tell the story of a time when demons fought the gods, unleashing a darkness that swallowed the sun. In Indonesia, villagers speak in hushed tones about the mountain that ate the sky. Aboriginal Australians share dreamtime stories of the great cold time when the world changed forever. The sand people of Africa tell tales of when the moon swallowed the sun for many seasons. For centuries, these stories were dismissed as mere myths, colorful tales to entertain and explain the unexplainable. But sometimes, myths carry whispers of truth, encoded in the stories we tell our children. And sometimes, these whispers lead us to the greatest survival story ever told. Today we're going to uncover how these ancient tales, passed down through hundreds of generations, connect to one of the most catastrophic events in human history. We'll explore how modern science is proving that our ancestors weren't just spinning tales. They were preserving the memory of a disaster that nearly wiped humanity from the face of the earth. But before we start uncovering those tales, please support this channel with like and subscribe. We really appreciate that. What we're about to witness isn't just another volcanic eruption. It's Earth's fury unleashed at a scale that dwarfs anything in human memory. Modern geology has uncovered a story that reads like science fiction, yet every bit of it is true. The Toba supervolcano didn't just erupt, it tore the Earth apart. Recent geological studies have revealed that the eruption occurred in several phases, each more devastating than the last. The first phase began with earthquakes that would have registered far beyond magnitude 8 on our modern scales. The ground didn't just shake, it started to bulge, rising hundreds of meters as magma pushed upward with unstoppable force. The numbers stagger the imagination. The main eruption phase lasted not hours or days, but two weeks of continuous volcanic activity. The magma chamber was so vast that when it emptied, it created a caldera, a volcanic crater, spanning 100 kilometers long and 30 kilometers wide. Picture Manhattan Island. Now imagine 100 Manhattan Islands side by side. That's the size of the hole this eruption left in the Earth. The eruption ejected 2,800 cubic kilometers of material, enough to cover the entire state of Texas in a layer of ash 20 feet deep. But this familiar comparison barely scratches the surface. Recent studies of the ash layers have revealed something even more terrifying. The eruption occurred in pulses. Each pulse sent a fresh column of ash and gas into the stratosphere, with the largest pulse reaching heights of 50 kilometers, far higher than previous estimates. Scientists studying the ash deposits have found something remarkable. The ash didn't just fall straight down, it traveled in waves. In India, over 3,000 kilometers from the eruption site, archaeologists have found ash deposits 6 meters deep. But it's not just the depth that's fascinating, it's the composition. The ash layers tell us that the eruption went through at least four major phases, each with its own distinctive chemical signature. Recent analysis of these ash layers using advanced dating techniques has revealed that the main eruption phase was preceded by several smaller eruptions over a period of centuries. It's as if the Earth was warming up for the main event. These preliminary eruptions would have caused their own climate disruptions, potentially weakening ecosystems worldwide before the main catastrophe even began. The immediate impact was apocalyptic. Within days, much of South Asia was buried under six meters of ash. But this was just the beginning. The true horror would unfold over the following decades. Sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere created a compound effect, reflecting sunlight back into space. Global temperatures plummeted by up to 15 degrees Celsius in some regions. Imagine the coldest winter you've ever experienced, then make it colder and make it last for years. The impact on Earth's ecosystems was devastating. The ash cloud created what scientists call a volcanic winter that lasted for nearly a decade. Plants withered under skies darkened by ash. Large mammals began to die off. The planet teetered on the edge of an ice age. But who were our ancestors that faced this catastrophe? This is where our story gets even more fascinating. You see, 74,000 years ago, we weren't quite the humans we are today. Our ancestors were early Homo sapiens, anatomically modern humans who had emerged in Africa around 300,000 years ago. They had already spread across much of Africa and parts of Asia 
living alongside other human species like the Neanderthals and Denisovans. These early Homo sapiens had already developed sophisticated tools, stone blades, scrapers, and points that were more advanced than anything their predecessors had created. They used ochre for body decoration and had mastered the use of fire. But the Toba catastrophe would push their technological and cultural abilities to the absolute limit. The genetic evidence tells us something remarkable. During this period, the human population may have dropped to as few as 3,000 breeding pairs worldwide. Every human alive today is descended from these survivors. Think about that, humanity was reduced to the population of a small modern village. But here's where the story of human resilience truly begins. In South Africa's Pinnacle Point Caves, archaeologists have discovered something extraordinary. These coastal dwelling humans not only survived, they innovated. The evidence shows a remarkable leap in tool-making sophistication. These survivors discovered that heating stone to precisely 350 degrees Celsius dramatically improved its flaking properties. This wasn't simple trial and error. It required careful control of fire temperature and timing. The resulting tools were 25% sharper and twice as durable as their predecessors. We found thousands of these heat-treated tools, each one telling a story of innovation under pressure. But the technological advances didn't stop there. They developed the first composite tools, stone blades mounted on wooden handles using natural adhesives made from acacia tree resin mixed with ochre. This innovation allowed them to create specialized tools for different tasks. Long-handled spears for hunting, small-bladed tools for processing shellfish, and delicate points for working with leather and plant fibers. They also learned to harvest shellfish according to lunar cycles, developing what might be humanity's first calendar system. Archaeologists have found shell middens, ancient trash heaps, with distinct layers that correspond to lunar phases, suggesting planned, systematic harvesting that maximized food resources while ensuring sustainability. Meanwhile, in India, at the archaeological site of Jwalapuram, we find evidence of remarkable adaptation. Below the Toba ash layer, archaeologists found specific types of stone tools. But what's truly fascinating is what they found above it, not just similar tools but improved versions. These survivors had taken their existing technology and refined it, creating smaller, more precise implements that required less raw material. The evidence of fire mastery is particularly fascinating. At multiple sites across Asia and Africa, archaeologists have found sophisticated hearth constructions dating to this period. These weren't simple campfires. The survivors had learned to create contained fire pits with stone surrounds that maximized heat while minimizing fuel consumption. A crucial innovation when wood would have been scarce in the volcanic winter. But perhaps the most remarkable innovations were social. The harsh conditions would have forced small groups to cooperate in unprecedented ways. Archaeological evidence suggests larger living spaces, indicating that groups who previously lived in small family units began to band together in larger communities. This social adaptation might have been the key to survival. And this brings us to one of the most intriguing theories in human evolution. The Toba catastrophe as the crucible of modern human behavior. You see, after the Toba eruption, we see an explosion of technological and cultural innovations in the archaeological record. Suddenly, we find the first clear evidence of symbolic thinking emarine shells used as beads, complex geometric patterns carved into objects, and ochre used for cave painting. The theory suggests that the catastrophe created a population bottleneck that had an unexpected effect. Those who survived weren't just the physically strongest, they were the most innovative, the most cooperative, and the most culturally adaptable. In essence, Toba might have acted as a filter, favoring those humans who could think abstractly, plan for the future, and work together in large groups. This is reflected in genetic studies that show something fascinating. Our DNA tells a story of survival and adaptation. The FOXP2 gene, crucial for language development and fine motor control, shows signs of intense positive selection during this period. The same goes for the MCPH1 and ASPM genes, both linked to brain size and cognitive development. Even more intriguing are the DRD47R and 2R variants, genes associated with novelty-seeking behavior and creativity. These variants appear to have become more common during this period, suggesting that creative problem-solving gave our ancestors a crucial survival advantage. Our immune system also bears the marks of this catastrophe. Genetic studies have identified a suite of immune-related genes that show strong evidence of selection during this period. As populations were forced into closer contact, sharing both innovations and diseases, those with stronger immune systems were more likely to survive. 
In other words, the Toba catastrophe might have inadvertently created the perfect conditions for the emergence of modern human cognitive abilities, literally reshaping our species' genome under the pressure of survival. The evidence appears in the archaeological record. Before Toba, human technology remained relatively static for thousands of years. After Toba, we see rapid innovation, new types of tools appearing, new hunting strategies being developed, and the first clear signs of complex symbolic expression. The memory of this catastrophe echoes through the myths of cultures across the ancient world. In India, the Toba event might be preserved in the story of Rakshasa Gadat Kacha, who created a darkness so complete it swallowed the sun. The myth tells how humans learned to steal fire from the gods during this darkness, mastering its secrets in ways they never had before. In Chinese mythology we find the tale of Ten Sons, where the world was plunged into darkness after the divine archer Ho Yi shot down nine suns to save humanity from burning. The following period of cold and darkness was survived through the gift of divine fire, perhaps a metaphorical memory of technological innovation. Aboriginal Australian Dreamtime stories speak of a time when the great cold came, and people survived by learning to make clever fire that burned even when wood was wet. The tales describe how people came together in caves, sharing knowledge that would have otherwise been kept secret within family groups. In African folklore, particularly among the sand people, there are stories of a time when the moon swallowed the sun for many seasons. These stories tell how people survived by following the teachings of ancient ancestors who showed them new ways to use fire and stone. Even more fascinating are the Indonesian myths from near the Toba volcano itself. Local legends speak of a time when the mountain ate the sun, and humans survived only by learning to speak with fire and stone. A poetic description that might represent the development of new tool-making and fire-mastering techniques. These stories, passed down through countless generations, share common themes. Darkness, cold, the mastery of fire, and the sharing of knowledge. They remind us that myths often carry the seeds of historical truth, preserved through the ages in the stories we tell. Today, as we face our own global challenges, the story of the Toba catastrophe offers us something powerful. Perspective. Our ancestors didn't just survive the impossible. They emerged from it stronger, smarter, and more capable of facing future challenges. Every human alive today carries within them the DNA of those incredible survivors. We are all children of Toba, descendants of those who faced the darkness and found a way to thrive. Their legacy lives on not just in our genes, but in our capacity for innovation, our ability to cooperate, and our drive to overcome seemingly impossible odds. The next time you look up at the sun, remember this story. Remember that there was a time when the sky went dark, when the world grew cold, and when humanity stood on the brink. And remember that we did more than survive, we became who we are today. This is our story. This is our heritage. See you on our next trip in a journey through time.